Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. On today's show, Mercedes MJ Javid, one of the stars of the Bravo TV show, Shaws of Sunset, joins me as we help you navigate your sex and relationship questions. Topics include getting your guy to love going down on you, what to do when your jealousy takes over, and how to have that elusive G-spot orgasm. All this and more. Thanks for listening. Secret institutions, bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com. You can check out everything going on on the website. I love when you subscribe to the podcast. We do two podcasts a week, which is so fun for you guys and for me, Tuesdays and Fridays. You can also listen now on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, SoundCloud, so many and places. Jesus, so many places. If you don't have one of those, then you probably don't own a smartphone. Exactly. So you've got, you're got it covered everywhere. Right. You're right. MJ, I'm going to introduce my guest because just jump in like that. I love it. Mercedes. Thank you. Mercedes. Mercedes Javid from Shaws of Sunset is here. Oh, I like a natural. I feel like you're already like my co-host because really you are today because we're going to get into some whatever you want, sex, relationships. This is only the beginning. This is only, it's like our foreplay. Right. Right. And so far I'm feeling well, like all. is like also a lost art in my bedroom personally. I didn't mean to go right in well, right away, but please like. Please oh tell me God. everything. Okay. So I just, first of all, I want you to lead this thing because this is a, your thing. No, I'm here, honey. We go back and forth. But I just wanted to say that my fiance, bless his heart, we are more in love now than we ever have been. And he was trying to impress me with his skills in the bedroom in the beginning. So he would be like, I'm a stallion. I am the best sex. And he, you know, very, very early on, he said to me, you've had your last first kiss. And then he goes, you've had your last, like this is the last person that you're ever going to F or sleep with. Like this is, we're a done deal. This is on lockdown. Like this is us. And I was like, still getting to know you, honey. I'm not really sure. Like you might be That's on that page. Much. I'm not. Right. Yeah. So um he was definitely um a stallion, a courting you. Sexually, he was insane in the beginning. But but I think that um foreplay is it's, it's important it's, like the sex the beginning sex it's not a myth right no no for okay so i just gave us a talk this weekend i was at wanderlust which is like a yoga festival in tahoe my yeah. speed my talk was called foreplay a requirement not a suggestion right a requirement we, we we need it to get warmed up we don't even see you walking in the door we're not turned on my I, don't touch me. Like if you touch my clitoris right now, it's you're gonna be like sandpaper. So yeah. don't go right for my like warm me up, turn me on. Right. That's so what you're saying, right? Do you remember that movie Spanglish with Taya Leone and um, Adam Sandler? Yes. And Taya Leone would stand right across from him, and he would go like this or something to her boobs. Yep. Like, yeah. He would like grab them like <sighs> a, a clown that would like right the nose like honk spin. honk right. <sighs> and she was like, "What is this? What are you doing?" And he loved her so much but he was so out of touch with like how to seduce a woman right and i think that's really funny because tommy is the most loving affectionate person every day is like 4th of july sparks when we before he leaves i get like buried with 100 kisses oh, in the morning okay. and then when he comes home his feet is lit, is lit up like rockefeller center but then like he doesn't do that you know, like that slow jam, right? R and B music video kind of sex that you see with like right. the White House with like the white I panties do. and the white sheets. Right. And he does. He have you told him this? I, actually, I don't want to tell him that. I want to seduce and let's bring it, it out of him. Okay, so let's let's work on this right now. I'm going to give you some some tips. Like, let's walk this through because okay. first of all, 
The good news is that we know that he has it in him because you've already oh, experienced time. it, right? The like at the best beginning, best sex ever. Okay, so what made what made it the best sex ever? So what made it the best sex ever was that I felt like I was being caressed from my head down to my shoulders, down to the small <sighs> of my back, all the way down to my feet and back up. He would do everything, right? And um, except I will say. We, I think that, can I say eat ass, eating yeah, ass? eat ass, totally. to say, You can say whatever you want, and I, sex. We're not, I know that it was really funny because eating ass is like the norm now. Right. We met before that was the norm, so we don't have to eat each other's ass. And I would Unless if you, you want wanted to. to. Right. Yeah. But it's funny, he's a little old fashioned. And it was like, it's like, that's not what he does. And he's not, I'm going to make another reference to like, um, oh my God, there's like that really cool guy I can't remember his name it'll come to me like if you're let's say 50 or 60 or 70 years old and you're dating a 20 year old girl right that man will probably eat her ass because he wants to keep up with like the 20 year old what the kids are doing right but anyway Tommy did everything he lasted a really really long time and he was having sex to rock my world and then after a couple of years it was more like I was like, are you really going to leave the sponge in the sink in that bowl of ice cream? <laughs> right. Like that? Is That's that, what happens. Is there, and then like, do you never can pick something up off the floor, even if it's been there for like a week or two? Right. So that's not hot. That Not hot. Kills the sex drive. But I would say it. So then I kind of, you know, like I just got a little bit lazy and then we gained like the weight together right. i've lost the weight he hasn't yet so it's just like that oh life stuff that that's like that is the life stuff that happens so it's been three years has it You've- yes almost okay and so here's the thing about foreplay and sex with couples is that it's always well it's always amazing in the beginning let's just say like amazing like amazing like, oh like the- 10 times a day have like explosive orgasms, right. both oh, of us. Right. The ba- I, mean, I just got excited for I just I got excited for honeymoon sex. I can't sex. even remember what that feels so, like So right. Anymore. So that's what happens at the beginning of a relationship. It is actually biology. So the first six months to two years of a relationship, we we have those hor- hormones. We've got the feel-good hormones. We've got the dopamine and we've got the oxytocin. Tocin, yeah. Right? And that bonds us. And then it just takes a nosedive. And the reason why, and then we're like, well, what happened? And then we're like, well, it'll come back. But you can't go back. You can't go back to exactly how it was. You can make it, you can work like on it and talk about it, it. But we don't know how to talk about it because we're like, what happened? And oh, then he, we just. He hates talking about it. Like, exactly. if I say, that's anything, why you got to show we, him. We, he, he's not into sexting. He's not into, like, girls out there, like, don't bother trying to DM him. He will never be turned on <laughs> by, like, a sext. DM. What does Even turn him on do you now? Just he's he just wants to see me like fluff up his pillow, maybe make like do his laundry, do like very traditional things, like remember to buy him his favorite juice and milk and like things like right. things that like a mother does makes him feel loved. And when he feels Love loved, language. that yeah, that's the way that's what makes him feel. And then like celebrating and like blowing off some steam. He's going to take me to the Lionel Richie concert on Monday night oh, at yeah. the bowl. Okay, good. And so like that's going to make him frisky because it's like he likes to go out and do stuff like batting cages and right. he wants to do miniature golf, which I'm like, that's way too cheesy no. for me. I would never. <laughs> well, Sorry. that's the adrenaline gets going also because it's like you're going to a concert, you're trying a new event. Dating your man. You got to date him. But here's the thing about the foreplay. It's almost like it's, it'll be another thing. Like put this, it'll be like, Take the sponge out of the sink and put your leg between my put your head between my legs, like you. Cause, right. So you can't have that in the same in Vibe, the same sentence, in the right? Same energy. Because that's how I hear it. But what if like I always talk about the this is basic, but the compliment sandwich, right? So what if you told him about he doesn't want to talk about sex? So what if you like snuck it up on him and you're like, it's not like we need to talk about sex because the sex no. talk should never be this like A we talk. need to talk. But Never. it's kind of like, I mean, you know the things that you do that turn him on, right? Besides getting him a sandwich, but let's right, say like things that you wear. Wear a thong to bed. Wear a thong to bed. Do you know what's so weird about him? Tell me everything. He notices if I have a brand new like thong bodysuit and I wear it to bed, he'll like, because I'll test him. I'll walk across the hall, much like the movie The Breakup. I knew right. I was going to be making, and Dennis Quaid was the other reference right. I was going to make. But, okay. But- Remember how she, um, Jennifer Aniston got the Telly Savalas and she walked by to get 
um, his attention in the movie The Breakup. Yes. Um, that, and he all of a sudden, she basically got out and he, so I will mm-hmm. put something on and I'll, out of the corner of my eye, I'll be looking out and I'll be like, will he turn his head up from the baseball game or not? And he's an, an avid sports fan. He loves fantasy. So basically like 11 and a half months out of the year, there's something more important than like me naked. Right, right. So it's very much on his terms. Sometimes he notices and he really, I'm like really surprised. I'm like, really? It has to be a new thong or a right. new bodysuit? Like, Does he, you, he remembers? He notices, yes. Okay. So he'll be like, oh, that one's you really cute. And I'm like, well, thank God I got it. Couldn't you just do a rotation from like last year? Um, Maybe. He's not but it's as, not about that. He's not as peaked by something he's seen before, okay. which is really odd. Well, he, here's the thing. So we want, so what you're basically saying is that you just want more attention, more forward. That, well, you said that he was all over your body and picturing his hands like they never left your body. Like Girl. your top, and just your Girl. breasts, like your... Girl. It's so Girl. hard at the beginning. He yeah. was like, I am going to lock this down. He knew that the last guy I dated before had ED. Oh, and so erectile I, dysfunction for those listening at home. Okay. Yeah, so I was honest. I we didn't. I couldn't didn't stay like hard. Talk about no his his the previous person. Not to be confused with Tommy. He had like a specific window of time where he could sustain um, a, sig- a a consistent significant erection, a significant but always the exact same number of minutes or. So seconds. he was like premature ejaculator. So he was Maybe. like just couldn't keep it right. Not fun. Okay, so yeah. so now your fiance he can. Oh yeah. Keep it. No comparison. So I think he was trying to impress me because he knew that the last person wasn't giving it to me. Right. The exactly. way I needed it. But it does, but he were it worked. So this is what we're saying is we got, <laughs> it worked and it got and you yeah, know it could have been here's the best mediocre news. sex. Here's the best news and why I'm not worried because you had great sex in the beginning. The problem is when people email me or they call me or they ask questions, and they're like, hey, so it was never they tell me all this stuff like I can't get it back, I'm not attracted to him, and I'm like, Well, well did you ever have it? They're like to be honest, it wasn't great in the beginning. You know that exactly. you can go there. So what if you build these scenarios around like, God, I'm wearing, when I keep thinking about, I know you say he won't sext, but what right. if you plant the seeds and you're like, I keep thinking about how hot it was that time. What was the hottest moment you had sex? The hottest? The hottest it for been, both of you maybe. Was there a moment? 100% where was bo- both of us. Okay. It, it was when we were like hanging out at home, like I like to, like, we would have, like, some tequila shots or something, like, with, like, Jimi Hendrix on, like, music. Miguel, for example, gets him in the mood, like, you know, like, like that slow, bluesy type of stuff is, like, easy. So if we just set the mood. What if you set, what if you set the mood? That would work. So I think. I have to do it. Because, so, going back to the compliment sandwich would be like, God, babe, I keep thinking about how hot it was that night with Jimi Hendrix, and I just think that'd be great to relive that again. He would think that would be corny for me to have to say it. He would just prefer that I just have it on. Okay, so it's a recipe. No discussion. Okay. Just have the lights, have the mood. Do that. I know. It's not, it's not rocket science, to be quite honest with you. Right. But you have to also let him know that I know he doesn't want to talk about it, because I feel that you can't put on Jimi Hendrix and the, the set the mood every single night of your life. And not every night is going to be amazing. Yeah. But he needs some to, nights I guess just work. what I want to get that right. You've got cameras <laughs> following you around. I feel like you just want them to know that it's like, like I say, it's not just like some light suggestion. We actually require it because we are slow oh my God. cookers. You just reminded me of something. Who? Tell this me This season on Shaw's. Yes. You know what he does? He says, my girl, we've been moving. We've been surrounded by dust, packing and unpacking boxes. She's in a hospital for 23 hours a day. And he gets me a room. And this is so funny. He takes us to a romantic getaway. And I just remembered that. And it is so funny. This conversation that we're having is part of, the, it plays out in the season. Right. And I love that. Yeah. Shots and- of Sunset, if you guys are living under a rock, you haven't seen it, you really need to check it out. It's just endless entertainment. And you're like the star. I just love, thank you. I just love that. They didn't that- to say that. You really are. Thank you. Yeah. I What I wanted to say is that what I love is that you see everything in my relationship with Tommy because he doesn't pull any punches. He doesn't embarrass easily. And I feel like the whole point of us doing a show is so that you can see like, Hey, like you might have that crazy monkey sex. And then you have to learn to continue to date your husband and date your fiance. And we had a date night and I'm just reminded that that was a really fun thing that we did. And the cameras were there to capture it. And I'm being a hundred percent honest. 
I don't know how it played out. I can't remember. It was the <laughs> and you don't know how they could edit it as well. We don't know what could happen. But here's the thing: you guys met on camera. So wait, first of all, you guys met online, correct? Yeah, social media. We met through a dating app. Okay, and then yeah. did you reach out to him first? Right? But didn't you kind of agree- I, pursue it? I mean, I need I, to, I want, this is a very inspiring story. Like that, you went after it. Whether right? I swiped first and it was a match, it was one of those where I like as soon as I swiped, it goes and goes, yeah, it's Bumble a match. or Tinder, right? Bumble, yeah. one of those. And Bumble then you, wasn't around yet. Okay. But Probably Tinder. as soon as you swipe and the other person has already swiped you, it just goes, boom, right. it's a match. Right. So I knew that he had already swiped. So he so technically mutual... picked me first. Right. Then let me tell you, that website would crash. It would basically, you'd look at your phone and everyone that you had connected with is no longer there because the, the, like the Tinder app or whatever app it was, right. was growing really fast and their server wouldn't be able to handle right. like all the communication. So I thought at certain times that I would never meet him because I didn't exchange phone numbers with him yet. Right. And I just didn't want to take it to text or phone yet because I would be vetting him and trying to make sure that there's chemistry and the chem- right. chemistry was so good. So like, right away there was chemistry when you saw him for the first time? This is what happened. I, I, love these I was in Palm Springs with Reza and Adam and they were like, girl, get off your phone. But I couldn't because I it's kept... hard to get off the phone. I kept laughing out loud at everything and he was like, you're really funny and really smart. And I was like, you're really funny and you're really smart. And the fact that we were so engaged in just the text um, chemistry that right. we had made me, um, you know, kind of like still uh, cautious but interested. Right. And then I finally was like, this site keeps crashing. Are you going to ever ensure to meet me and like have my number? Right. Was like he like played it very well. He was like, "Whenever you're ready, whenever you're comfortable, sweetheart." Huh? And I was like, um, "Like um, now, here's my number. Now that you said that, yeah." And then we were just talking on the phone, and then all of a sudden, I hear, I hear his queen's thick accent, and I was like, "Who the f is this guy?" Like. Who are you? And I was like, did you have too much coffee? (laughs) Well, it was the kind of, I was like, you sound really wound up, like really nervous. He's probably nervous. He kind of also like nervous and loud. And I was like compensating for him. And I was like, um, are you, did you drink like too much coffee today? Like, are you drinking coffee in the evening? It's like seven o'clock. Maybe you should. And he's like, no, I'm fine. I was like, oh boy. So I had a little bit of like pullback, but then finally one night I had a girl's night out at Craig's and I was feeling myself and I decided I would like pop on over and say hi and meet him face to face. And the rest was basically history. I did ghost him for a couple of weeks just because I think I I had some of my like old relationship baggage where I would say like, no, ignore them or like figure it out or think about it or don't play games or that's a thing or like kind of pull back a little bit. Is that what you mean? I used to. Right. But once you want to have a real relationship, you won't play games because it's stupid and you won't get what you want. You want intimacy. I think it's true. And when you want to make someone feel loved, you will not mess with their head. So you, but you kind of knew pretty much after a few months of dating and the sex was great. Yeah. Which we love. So, when did you first discover sex? Like, when did you first masturbate? Do you remember? Uh, six, uh, six, age six. Um, I locked the door and I was visiting like my aunt in the summer. So I had a little time on my hands right? and I knew that it was like a good feeling, but I also knew that I wasn't, it wasn't appropriate for me to necessarily explore. I've, I've had a little bit of shame. Obviously it needed to be private. It wasn't like It wasn't going to be appropriate for the door to be open. Right. So I knew it was private and I knew it was just self-discovery. And that was it. I didn't have anything weird about it. I just knew that obviously you don't want your, you know, aunt to walk in and you're exploring But you knew you were one of these women who just knew that it felt, because I was like, I was a late bloomer. Clearly that's why it's like I've made it my life. I didn't, I didn't even know about masturbation. It never occurred to me. That's why I think it's just so weird until I was like 20 and I was having sex. 11th grade, I found some household thing. And then I skipped school for two weeks. <laughs> what was the household thing? We're going to get, yeah. It's really weird. I can't remember. It was like, like a something. spatula or something. No, it was plastic. Toothbrush? Oh, okay. I don't remember. Pervertibles. That's what they call them. People, they, oh, people, no. When you use a household item as a, like a vibrator or a dildo. 
That's just it a was, technical term. It was term. like, it was sort more of. like a, yeah, I don't know what it was. I wish I could remember. So you've always been very like, that's because you'll see, we get a lot of emails and calls from listeners, women who aren't as in touch, who can't even have oh, a can of orgasms. Can I tell you what I did? This Everything. is so crazy. So I would close the curtains, but they were those vertical blinds. So I moved one over just enough so that I could see the gardener that would come out and the, with like the leaf blower right. and all of that. So I was actually semi voyeuristically right. pleasuring myself knowing that like he could see because I lived like on a street level and he could, I could have gone full Monty and like just opened everything and given him a free show. Right. But I was That's still, hot. I didn't have the courage to go full. We were in but, high school, but I would do, I was a, I was You've a been pretty bad girl in the beginning when I was just innocently discovering. But that's like really cool that you you knew yourself and you know your body and you've always been able to like orgasm. A sexual menace to society. Yeah. Today, a fantasy would be, I joke with Tommy that if he doesn't give me, if like he doesn't satisfy my needs, then I'm just going to go to Home Depot not wearing a bra with something somewhat see th- something somewhat see through, right? And like I'll cut my cut off shorts into like a thong and I'll just <laughs> do my shopping, right? That's like that's your fantasy. That's like a fantasy type of thing. Then you're never supposed to live out. I think some fantasies you want to live out, and some you don't. Yeah. So, but what I like is what you're saying. So it can be confusing to people because they're like, I don't ever really want to have a gangbang in real life, but I do fantasize about eight men. And, you know, um, or maybe you do. Yeah. See what I'm saying? It's different for everybody. But I don't think that since you're engaged now, you might want to go to um, Home Depot and do that. Maybe as a threat to him. But here's what I'm hearing is or that what turned you on though would be. Wearing something sexy is what I hear. And you feel really in your body when you're doing oh, yeah. that. And then him like taking you in this way that would, so how can you get him to do that without having the talk? How can we build these situations into your life that it's like role playing and which sounds super cheesy to some people, but it's, it actually works and can infuse new life into your sex life. Well, new the energy. first thing is, the first thing is that we worked out a lot together in the beginning. So that can return absolutely now i'm the only one that works out and so on the real like this is is this is a problem that i'm sure you're aware of but oh, like yeah. if the guy doesn't work out then he's going to be tired and so energy has a lot to do yes. with that but i would very much take it on my own like to um do the naughty schoolgirl yeah. uniform, which I know for a fact that he likes because he loves Britney Spears. Yeah. He's like a thing for her. <laughs> right. So I was like, oh, I'll just do that one day. Like I'll go to you Hustler should. and figure that exactly. out. Exactly. Hustler Hollywood has it right here. We could send you some too. We've got some sponsors who have some uh, stuff. Oh, really? Well, because it's fun because that's what makes you feel good. And then it's not like people think, oh, but I have to have a whole scenario. No, you like put that on instead of your thong. And sometimes and you come when out, we're at formal events, yeah. he will be like, hey, babe, want to go to the bathroom <gasps> and do it? And I'm like, babe, but like, no. We're, like, we're at, there's the like, cameras and we're at a wedding. Like, or, we can, <laughs> yeah, like we're mic'd. We can't. It's not going to be cute. Okay. Things like that. So we know that these are the things that turn but him he on. he does like, yeah, like spontaneous, like he loosens up. When he's, a man is relaxed, and I think that's what vacation sex is, because, Best. you know, like, he will cry if the Mets lose the World Series. He will cry, like, he, he, and then work stress is really intense, because he's got so many responsibilities at his company, and um, I think at the, at the end of a Mets game and a work day, that's not a vacation vibe. That's right. not him being relaxed, so if we go to an event... Then he might have, have like a Heineken right. and then he might loosen up enough and want to like pull me into the bathroom. Then I'll be like, you will not ejaculate on this silk dress. It <laughs> right. will show. Exactly. Yeah. Unlike Monica Lewinsky or something. We're not going to save the dress. Like he doesn't care. But here's the thing. So I feel like when you get home then, even if you, because when you say to him, I might go, I'm still trying to help you because I get obsessed with how I want to like fix this for you. And I know we can't fix it in a day and I'm not even saying there's big problems, but if you say to him, I'm going to go to Home Depot and do this, if you don't do this, then he's going to feel like threatened, maybe? Even though you might even he say said, it joking. I've said it to him. And what did he say? I said it to him this week. He's like, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Because he's feeling Because he like, knows I'm not going to do that. But how can we get him? Does, so you say he has to be relaxed. What if you give him a massage when he gets home? For he like 10 minutes. That. Right. And then That's he gets in the mood. Oh, then all you get I a massage have to do is this. In the school. Right. That's and then you've got all him. I have to do. Because especially for men and women, stress is the biggest killer of our sex drive and why we don't want to have sex. So if yeah. he's stressed, but sometimes it just takes like a second to shake him out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, do you guys ever use toys or anything? Because I'm going to give you a I little got gift him, basket. I got a couple of um, vibrating cock rings, but they're still in the package. Okay. 
I've got some fun things for you. Do you ever use since high school? Do you ever use like toys like uh, like a nothing? Thug nothing in his ass would be ever acceptable. But what about for you? Job? Okay, we're gonna bring you. Some, I just have some stuff for you. I mean, I think you'll like it. It's fun. I'm Again, open. spicing it up. I'm open. I'm excited. Okay, we are going to. Um, get into some sex in the news. Yeah, well, we're just going to get into, we're never done, but we're going into some sex in the news, which relates to you, which is why I thought of it, because you could be very enlightening to our crowd. Cool. So listen. Sex in the news. Sex in the news, baby. Okay. Shortage of suitable men causing spike in fertility preservation treatment. Wait, shortage of what? Available men. So women Uh are freezing their eggs because, preserving their eggs because they're saying there's just not a lot of great men out there. So this was a study by Yale University. They found a terrifying demographic shifts that have created a large deficit between the number of female graduates and their male counterparts. It's led to professional women vastly outnumbering educated men in countries. But where they're going to is they looked at 150 women undergoing egg freezing procedures at eight different clinics. They found that the vast majority of the women were attempting to buy themselves time to start a family because they hadn't found a partner. So And they're focused on their career. Right. This is my question about what you just said. Is it that the men are undereducated and not like at the same level? Is that what the women are saying? There's a shortage of good men. Is that yeah. is based on? I mean, on- undereducated, just, they're just not finding men. Like, yeah, that's exactly what they're saying is that like they're terrified by it because they're just not finding the guys that they want to find. Of and good caliber? Of the caliber that they want to find. Even just, yeah, they're just like, you know what? And why not have these safety precautions? And just get the eggs out of there anyway, and then it takes the pressure off. I also feel interested in exploring whether they're, those men, are, are, they, are they bad because they're players and they are taking women for granted, or are the women responsible for not allowing that to happen? Because I have nothing but strong, successful, wonderful, like accomplished, loving women, but they all might have a hang up that will keep them and standing in the own way of get, we do get in our own way. You're right. We absolutely do get in our own way. And yeah, and I never, I never adhere to the fact that there's no more good men. Like when people say that, like, I feel like wherever people live, whatever town they live in, they think they live in the worst town today. And I just feel like wherever you go, there you are. We, yeah. are, we can find someone wherever you go. But I think it's more about having the, the real headline of this is that that they want to prioritize their career and they can't find men to settle down to. And maybe it's because we, people are delaying marriage. They're not seeing a lot of models of marriages even working perhaps because there's like divorced parents, all that. And they're thinking, I just want to like, just take care of it and make sure that I've got my eggs all ready to go. Definitely. But, what I mean, I froze my eggs. So yeah, and, this is what you're going through now, right? Um, we, well, I had already frozen my eggs a couple of years ago. Okay, good. And um, the... Next step, obviously, is to start a family, and let's not forget a wedding, of course. Yeah, and, when's a wedding? Um, oh. Well, we're we're planning it now, okay. so I'm really excited, and I'm also excited that you know I do think that my dad is well enough to walk me down the aisle. Which last year, you know, it was um, a really crucial, crazy time where you know we just didn't know I don't know how you shoot and all that stuff going on. I'm sorry. Oh, it's thank hard. you. Right. We were oh, egg freezing, about, just we like you recommend about. it. And I feel like it yeah, wasn't Yeah, I talked about known. it. Yeah, I talked to all my cast about it. I shared it, especially with Asa. We just, you know, like Reza and them, they right. just, they know everything about the process that I went through with egg freezing. And at this point, it's just fingers crossed, you know. So I'm going to give a shout out to our sponsors. And then will you help me answer some emails from my listeners? Oh, or to yes. give advice. I love that. That's exciting. Okay, so we've got MJ from... The Shaws of Sunset on Bravo. If you haven't seen it this season, it's two episodes have aired right now. Yes, and the third episode will air on this Sunday night at 8 p.m. Okay, you're killing it. What, or, or the fourth episode when okay. you air this. Exactly. It'll be the fourth episode. Then you can always watch them wherever you You can watch at. it on demand. You could watch it on Apple TV. So entertaining. ITunes. I love it. You're so good. Okay, everyone. Thank you. And thank you for supporting our sponsors. We love them. I never talk about any toys that I've not used or products and services that I haven't used that I don't love. So thanks for supporting them. And we'll be right back with your questions. We love you. MJ, we're going to answer questions. Thank you for being here. Everyone, thank you for emailing me. And thanks for um, getting in touch, you guys. You can go to... Here's what you can do. Text me. So easy, you guys. 797979. Text Ask Emily one word and your questions. You can send them that way, which is so easy. 
You can also uh, leave me a voicemail, 818-ASK-SWE1. Most importantly, however you get in touch. Oh, and also go to the website, obviously, sexwithemily.com. Ask through there. But most importantly, I need you to give me your gender, your age, where you live, and how you listen to the show. Can't wait to hear from you. Hi, Emily. I haven't been listening for very long, but your shows have already done so much for my relationship. Thank you. Yes. My boyfriend and I have been together for one and a half years, and recently... He hasn't gone down to me as much as he used to. Oh my God, I love this question I already. That's what I said too. Oh my God, this, is, this After, is the thing. I know, this is the thing. After listening, I didn't even know this was your thing. After listening to a lot of your communication themed podcasts, I gained the courage to ask him about it. It was then that he confessed he is too grossed out. <gasps> she goes, what the heck does he mean? Right. Well, that's what she said. She goes, what? He assured that it wasn't me. It was just the thought of giving oral that really makes him cringe. But he used to, right? He never really has. What'd she say? Um, she said in the beginning he used to. Right. They always do in the beginning. Uh, they need to continue though. But it was just the thought of giving oral that really makes him cringe. He can't explain why. And I can see that it does bother him. Since our talk, he's tried again, but it lasted two minutes. Not quite going to work for me, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I've done my research and apparently one in five straight men don't enjoy giving oral. Not sure if this is a real fact though. We really do love each other and it's obvious if you see us together. Is it selfish of me to feel a little resentment? I love going down on him and I wish the feeling was mutual. Oh. Anything else I could do to turn him on to oral sex with me? Thank you so much. Ronnie, female, even though I have a guy's name, 21, Long Beach. She's 21. First of all, she will give it to him. Right. She, he will accept the oral sex. Right. And he won't reciprocate. I have friends, like five girlfriends that have ended relationships because they were like, this isn't going to work. He didn't, he like, he only goes down on me for 30 minutes and that is not enough. Same. Like, so it really, it will not work. And I'm like, really? He makes good money. He loves you. He's attentive and he just doesn't do it that often. I'm like, you sound like a little bit of a Nazi, like, right. because I th- was impressed by the duration. <laughs> like for me, I would like foreplay where like oral sex as foreplay where he could just kiss it. He could Tease. just, yeah, just like, just kiss it. Just acknowledge it. You can also finger it. You can also, so you know, just do. use your tongue a little bit. But then it's all about like the spirit of it. I'm sorry, but I don't know why is not an answer. Saying he doesn't understand why is not good for their intimacy. Right. And like at least get to the bottom of it so that they can figure out. I exactly. I agree with you. So, I mean, everything that you're saying, but at first when we're both reading it, we're like, that's horrible that he won't do it. Right? Like if a guy doesn't want to go down and I broke up with someone it's because hurtful. he didn't go down to me. It is. I'm going to say, though, he's. Tw- I'm assuming that he's 21 and she's 21. So? so did you have great oral sex at 21? Yes, hell yeah. You did? See, I didn't. Oh, my God. My first boyfriend, we ah. lost our virginity to each other. Everything was perfect. And we pleased each other mutually. Okay, and that's amazing. And he was very happy to... And he was Jewish, by the way. So <laughs> I think Jewish guys make really good lovers. Like that's they, what they say. He, he, they're pleasers I've had my in the share. Bedroom. They are pleasers. Some of them mm-hmm. can be. That's true. So here's the thing that I want to say, though, Ronnie, is that... I still am going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he probably hasn't done it that much because he's 21 and that maybe he still had, maybe he had a bad experience or maybe it wasn't so pleasurable, but he can learn to like it and to even enjoy it. I feel like when a guy's going down on you, what they learn eventually is that like, hopefully he will link to the fact that, wow, she's getting so turned on by me doing this and that turns me on and I'm yes, getting the pleasure that's great. and you get into the moment and he won't be thinking like, this is gross because we all worry about like, do we taste okay? Is the sense okay? What if you guys like took a shower together, make sure you're clean, totally. doing all that stuff Friday beforehand and um, and just saying like, maybe he does say he doesn't have to go maybe inside, she- but he does build up with the teasing and the caressing and the outside of your lips and outside. The, I mean, I love when guys don't tease nearly enough. Like, right. My they forget. Thighs. They take it for granted. They, they forget that we, how much we like it. But I like to say to Tommy, like, I really like it when you finger me. And I really like for him to know it makes me feel more loved, too. Right. Because if he skips over that, then what ends up happening is that it's too much of a focus on him being pleased. Right. And that And you're not even, you're not like, turned on. You're not aroused. That's, it's all about that's like... cheap and th- not cool. No, not exactly. Sexy. Well, that's the thing is that this is not mutual. I mean, Ronnie, here's the thing. You, you require it, like we say about foreplay. You actually require that to be turned on and in a way he's not willing to do what you need. It's like if he just sticks in his dry penis and you're not warmed up, 
it hurts, it's selfish, and you're giving him blowjobs. So there's like a lot going on here. Make sure that you're clean. Make sure that you shower. But I feel like there's Hairless. something else going out here that he doesn't have as much experience as, as he needs to have. And you have to let him know that it makes you feel like not turned on and like not adored. And it doesn't make you feel loved. And I don't think that you can th- you can make a threat, though, either. I mean, like, if you don't do it, I'm going to leave. But the truth is, I believe that if he doesn't want to change, and he doesn't try to work on it with you, that you have grounds to end this relationship if he doesn't want to please you in that way. Because I broke up I with agree. someone because they wouldn't go down to me. Yeah. I was like, really? Like, it was like a year. We kept talking about it. He's like, it's just not my thing. And I was like, well, then you're not my thing. And I'm Definitely. out. Definitely. Yeah. Your last question, anything I can do to turn him on to oral sex with me, I think you can just... Like we said, I don't think that there's one thing you can say she or could do, but you turn can turn around sh- and go down on him and have her pussy in his face. You could sit on his face and, and not like, let him move. No, like the like the reverse it, instead right. of like sixty nine facing him. Yeah, like be in the sixty nine position. And I think that once he gets aroused, he will feel compelled to right. want to please her back. Maybe what if he starts with fingers and he starts with some lube? Yeah. You should always. I love using lube for all kinds of oral sex. Um, and then yeah. Joe has his flavored lube that I'm going to give you, they have flavored lube that's like salted caramel. Like I always tell women use it for blowjobs, but you could both use it together and like literally like you'll both taste like you're having like a caramel sundae. Ronnie, you have to have a talk with him though and let him know really how much it, it feels and give him some tips here. And thank you, MJ. I Sex with that, MJ. Yeah, we want to know show. We love how that it. works out for you. For yeah, sure. For sure. Okay, let's do another email. Hi, Emily. I have a question about possessiveness slash jealousy. I've been with my husband for three years. He's the most loyal partner I've ever had. I've been cheated on by all my exes but I'm 100% confident he would never do the same. The problem is, I have a strong feeling a coworker of his, who we met around the same time we got together, has feelings for him. She seems very enthusiastic about their friendship, but is always cold towards me on the rare occasion we interact. Despite my past experiences, I totally trust my husband, but I get uncomfortable when she's around and wind up being rude or dismissive toward her when she isn't receptive to my friendliness. I see her interact with others and she's open and warm to them. I have not mentioned this to my husband because it seems obvious only to me, but it's eating away at me. I hate seeing myself act this way towards another woman out of jealousy when I don't know for sure what's going through her head. How can I get over it or at least find a way to interact with her like a normal adult? Thanks, Anne 30, Georgia. So yeah. she's jealous. So she's like, I have first a lot of all, to she's, say okay, yeah. So let me just set up that real quickly. She's got a past of men cheating on her. Which is very, very hard to get over. Like, you're always going to think people are going to be cheating if you go through a bad situation. And she hasn't checked this with him. So these are her own, like, as a woman, she's watching, going, oh, she's not. Like, these are all in her head. She's making assumptions here. Right. And getting really angry without addressing it. And, and so get think, rid of the baggage. That has nothing to do with this guy. Nothing. This guy she's is projecting. not acknowledging. And if he's not flirting back, he's not unaware of it. He's not oblivious to it. But if he's ignoring it like many men who are faithful and loyal do, then my advice to her is when you see that girl, give your man a lot of attention. <laughs> Kiss his neck, lick his ear. I don't care if they're at a work social event. Just give him like s- sneak something in that like the boss doesn't have to see is like inappropriate PDA, but she can always just put her hand on his back and like rub it. She can move it all, to, you know, like up to his right. shoulders and just like basically pee on him in public in right. front of her. Exactly. Marker territory. But yeah. he might. But what if that's she could do that. But I feel which is not like, you know, to say like, hey, don't mess with my man. But I'm wondering if this is a whole projection that he, she's not that nice to her because Anne thinks she's being really nice to this one. But maybe she's not because she's still freaked out by it. But this is in her head. So I think either she is and it's important to get some therapy maybe and talk about this stuff if you really don't trust him and it's making you insane or you need to talk to him about it and just say listen I know this is irrational but I'm feeling this way about this woman that you're working with and I just want to be honest about it anything I need to know but I feel like it's mostly in her head and there's probably not anything going on although I'm Uh gonna bring one more thing up what about female intuition I mean, I, I don't think someone? she's imagining it. Well, she, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. So so that's why I think she does in a very smart, not in an accusatory way, not in a I see what's going on way because that's, and you're coming from a place of dealing with this a lot, but just like, hey babe, you know my past. I'm just going to bring this up. But I've. it just feels to me like I'd like to know a little bit more about your relationship. I get a little weird feeling and I just got to bring it up. Do you know what I say? What? If I'm, if I'm around something and especially in the beginning of my relationship with Tommy, I would throw my weight around and I would do it 
proudly and it worked very well. So let's just say that, let's just use this as a hypothetical. I would say, you better know that I know that that girl wants you. So you better keep your effing distance from her. And if I ever see her, I might say something to her. So make sure you respect this unless you want to lose this because you will be missing teeth. Part of your penis (laughs) might be snipped off in the middle of the night and I won't care. So I'll just go like crazy for a second. Right. And then he looks at me and he's like, oh my God, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> and then he is getting trained. It's He's getting trained. I, so I, yeah. Now, and this is something I established early and I was like so into it. And ultimately I was being vulnerable and sassy. The way I was and communicating. And he loved that about you. He took it like he was like, Can you do that sexually and be like, you got to go down on me? No, anyway, I'm just trying to fix your sex life. But no, I think you're no, right No, he here. doesn't want to be told what to do ever. Okay. Like he, he's got to suggest it. That yeah. Okay, but wait, I, that's with okay, her. That's another tactic. You got to have that. And but look like, at you. You're not like every woman. Like I don't know if I could do that. Oh, but I you can. I appreciate that. In oh, you. but you can but have a like half a glass not, of wine, right. and you can. I need to drink more. And then I, you I, just speak it and just say it and put it out there. Because do you believe that this is how I think I got him to propose? Because I was being so vulnerable with him all the time. Like I would tell him whatever I wanted and at the right time and in the right way. And it's not what you say, it's how you say it. There was one other occasion that only happened maybe a year into our relationship and he complimented my friend's dress like three times. So when we got home, I was like, I don't know what the fuck you think. You like, you have lost all of your social <laughs> a- um, etiquette. Right. And not once, not twice, but three times. And I was like, don't ever, ever, ever make me feel like that. I was humiliated. I feel like now, what mm-hmm. is she thinking? First of all, it was a sexy dress. It was okay. a, one of those dresses that had a lot of those strappy cutouts. And right. Like she's a boob, nice figure right, right. and all these things. So I basically said, make sure I don't see it. Make sure I don't notice it. And I'm also not like possessive in a way that is going to turn him off to me. I will acknowledge that he can watch as much porn as he wants or whatever, but I like lost my shit. And I told him, and and I even told my girlfriend, I said, I noticed that Tommy was making a lot of compliments and it made me really uncomfortable. You said this to the friend. I even told my friend separately. Yes. And she was like, yeah, I'm glad you said something. The first one was nice, but the second one was like a little extra. No, I would be upset too, but I guess that's interesting. I don't know. You put the cards on the table, you put your feelings on the table and I think it really works. Have you always been like that? Been able to just speak up for what you want? No, not when I was insecure and I was young. I would You have such confidence. You really do. Do you think that the show has helped you with that, being on TV for six years? I know you've probably always, but obviously you're always, a, you're a developed woman. I developed it before. You, I had that prowess before the show. Right. But I didn't have it when I was like 19. Right, I would of course. This is a learned different. thing. You're right. But also speak, however you say it, you're asking for what you want. You're telling him that his behavior is not okay. And a lot of women are pleasers. I think I'm more of a pleaser and I maybe I, in the past, didn't want to be as vulnerable and I probably wouldn't even show I'd be like, okay, whatever, he's a jerk. Or a lot of people would end a relationship or be like, I'm going to get him back. But I think that you confronted him right then when it happened is really healthy. And you pick a guy that thinks you're the most beautiful woman in the world and you're done. Exactly. And you that's know? such a, see for me, like same thing. Like if a guy doesn't like worship me and tell me I'm beautiful and think I'm amazing all the time, like it doesn't work for me. Like I can't date an asshole. Not that I don't date guys that have other issues. Don't get me wrong. But like to me, that's like a bottom line, like. If you don't think I'm amazing, beautiful, and make me feel that way, this won't fly. Of course not. So I feel like going back to Anne, seems like everything's great. He's a great guy. You're just having these feelings, which is totally okay, Anne, that you are had a past that where this happened. And so you got to bring it up to him and however you want to do it and just say, I think with the, the vibes of getting. I think vibes. you should also have a sense of humor sometimes and a playfulness about the things that make you crazy. You know, like yeah. instead of like just flip the script on yourself and just say, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to see this girl let's say at this work event tonight this girl really gets under my skin and just like have a laugh at it like have a have a little laugh with yourself and maybe again like maybe a little a glass of wine or a glass of champagne gets you like kind of like in the mood and maybe she could just say I know you think my I mean maybe like I know you think my husband is hot um so do I it's cool <laughs> we could still be friends like don't worry I notice I see you and then you've said it and it's like would you like, um, you know, would you like to go to the bar and get a drink together? Like right. something like that. Yeah, and then bond, it. right? That's yeah. not the way to do it. And I, then, you know, give I like what you're saying about keeping it light, though. Even saying to him, like, 
hey, I know, babe, I know that I've got this jealousy thing from before and people cheat on me, but I just want to bring this up. I think it's a little weird. Tell me about your relationship. What do you think about it? Like, is there, and has there ever, ever been a weird vibe about it? So then you don't seem as, because we don't know anything yet. Right, right. I like all these ways you're saying, but there's right. all these different ways to skin the cat. There there's are. Lots of different ways, as they say. So we got one more email. Hi, Emily. I'm a 24 year old mother of two with a very naughty sex life that I love. My husband of five years is an amazing lover. So that's great. Mm-hmm. He's always trying new positions, massages, and he's very seductive. But here's the problem. I've always had multiple clit orgasms, so clitoral orgasms, but I've never found my G-spot. I've been masturbating before I even knew what sex was, so I'm a whiz getting off that way. However, I feel sad that I haven't found my G-spot. Let's make this happen. Any techniques I should be trying. One other thing, my husband is not comfortable with me using toys that go inside me. Any advice for getting him comfortable with this? Thanks for your show. I absolutely love listening while I work out. Savannah, 24, Merkel, Texas. I think the toys that she wants to, if she wants to encourage him to approve, they should definitely be way smaller than his penis. Exactly. Never yeah. bring a toy that's bigger than the penis. Yeah, that's just an F you right, right in your face. Well, okay, here's my, th- do you have G-spot orgasms or internal? I've had, I've had, they're not often. Right. But I know that it had to do with the direction and it needed to be a banana shaped So it thing. curved a little bit. It had to have a little bit of like curve as it was going in. So it okay. does have a lot to do with the position and True, it can. And then I think you also have to be extremely aroused and you have to work your way up like tantric, right. you know, like you have to give it like a nice long and probably like some, what do you call those lubes that you can put inside that might stimulate her G spot? And can he put like a condom that has ticklers on the outside of it? Maybe, but Maybe. I feel, yes, we have some of those by skin condoms. These are all, look at you. I you know. could just do my show. I love it. <laughs> this is so fun. Like I could just leave. I could go to lunch. No, it's you amazing. can't. We'd but, be lost. But here's the thing is that, okay, so here's the thing about the G-spot and I think this might help you too. Yes, of course, there's certain people have magic bananas and you get on top and you're like, oh my God, I had it. However, women can learn how to find their G-spots and how to have a G-spot orgasm. Because for some women, for me, it didn't happen. I had to learn through masturbation. I had to be like, okay, I'm going to have a G-spot orgasm. When I started the show 12 years ago, I had never had one. So I was like, okay, this is like a worthwhile go. And I had, believe me, I'm not a virgin. I had lots of sex. I was on top. But but for some women, their anatomy doesn't really allow it either, like where their G-spot is. So there's positions you got to figure out. And and, and may I interject one thing before I forget? Okay, when I found that watching topless women, I'm heterosexual, right? But I'd rather watch like um, topless, like if I see tits, yeah, (laughs) just random. Like if I see girls' tits, I get aroused, and for me to find my G spot vaginally for a vaginal orgasm, I would need visual stimulation of breasts, and that turned me on so much that that was an essential ingredient to having like my G-spot um, wow. aroused. The, bo- the breasts, okay. So it's like, get some visuals that you have not discovered yet, and then don't go near your clitoris. Just stimulate with something. He doesn't have to be there well, on your, you know, you could try it privately. And then if you just stimulate the ins- your inside mm-hmm. and you're vi- uh, visually stimulated, I think you could get so turned on that you work your way up and yeah. then maybe you just like pat and tap the, the clitoris and then you'll have it. Well, that's okay. That's amazing. But the, do you still watch porn like that? Do you guys watch porn together? Do you know what I do? I, I go on YouTube. I, I do so, alone, not right. with Tommy. Okay. That might but, be a good thing if he watches porn too. I'm just thinking he does, you could but do on together. his own time, like he'll just do it in the bathroom. Like his, right. his is like a random release. Right. Well, that's how it is for men, but wait, that they want a release like that. And they're like, I'm doing it on my own. I got to knock it out. Yeah. But okay. So Same here's for the thing, me. Savannah, right? Like it's a stress reliever. It is a huge stress reliever. Savannah, here's the thing is that the thing about the G spot is that it actually, I think this is a work that she has to do on her own because you've already been having sex with him. It's not working. You, it hasn't happened before. But for women, what some a few tips are that typically it helps to have a clitoral orgasm to already be aroused because when you knock out that clitoral orgasm, however you do it with a toy or whatever, then the blood, you become more engorged and the blood kind of rushes to the G spot. Mm-hmm. So you're already turned on and so you're, then you put your finger inside and it's like you do like the come hither motion with the finger going towards your belly and it's about like two inches inside you. You're looking for like a rough spot and you just start applying pressure to it mm-hmm. and it might feel like you have to pee. But you keep going, you could have that G-spot orgasm. Also, doing Kegel exercises, Kegel exercises, that is, was my game changer. I'm doing it now. You're doing it now. Do now you do them often? So. 
Not only when I remember when someone right. says it and then because, I'm like, mm. right. Cause they're so hard to remember to do. And so I have a lot of things to do that you could do. Um, you could do your Kegels. Are you going to have sex tonight or even maybe an afternoon delight? Cause this maybe. part of the conversation is definitely making, I have two options. Forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually could have sex shortly. I know. Oh, really? Right? Yeah. Because it feels like a Friday and I think you should it have some summer like Friday. Friday. I just keep back from this like crazy yoga. Fa- I should be having more sex. Um, and possibly today there are two options. Two options. Can we two talk about men. them? Oh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Well, I can't because here's my issue. You can probably relate to this on your show is that like, I don't know if they listen or not. And mm-hmm. some do, some don't. And when they do listen, they tell me they don't listen and then they hear that I'm having sex with more than one though. person at yeah. the same time. Like, I mean. I've Allegedly. Been, alleged, I've been like fluctuating here. But Allegedly. let's go back to... um. Or Savannah you could just Rick. be messing with their heads and this totally is, there's only yeah, one this man is just for good material, there. people. I'm practically a virgin again. So <laughs> here's the thing about Kegels is that I made an iPhone app called Kegel Camp because oh, I couldn't right. remember because doctors are like, oh, you should do it at the traffic light. No one freaking remembers. So it reminds you twice a day to do them. So you could try that as well. Mm-hmm. You could try that Savannah, but also there's these, there's these Kegel balls. So the Bloom by WeVibe, which is brand, do you know WeVibe toys? I don't, um, I don't know, gonna, but I know about the Kegel balls. Okay, so you put them inside you, and it vibrates. Not It could turn you on or not turn you on, but it it's more for the point of like you're squeezing your pelvic floor muscles, and it gets tighter, and you can feel it over time. Wow. I wear them to the gym. I wear them walking around because you're naturally working them. I I'm would give you some. become a sexual menace to yeah. society if I had those. I would be so turned you on. You could, though. So um, there's a remote control to it. So your part, he can download the, if he likes to be in control. That is crazy. And he could be watching TV and you could be on the couch. I've got other vibrators for you, like by WeVibe. And he could just sit there and be like turning you on. You could wear it to a party. It's really oh my hot. God, that would be so cool. Right? You would like this. And he likes the discreet sex. We just found out the secret for your MJ. We unlocked so it. Excited. I knew this would happen. Yay. Okay, but Savannah, here's the thing. Your husband might never be comfortable with an insertable toy. But eventually, I think if he sees that you guys have pleasure, you're married, he might get there. But right now, on your own, because unless he wants to go on this G-spot searching journey with you, which maybe you guys, when you masturbate, he's sitting next to you and he helps you. But I feel like you should try this on your own with your fingers. Get a toy. You can hide it from him. There's the Rave and the Nova, which is the the Rave by WeVibe, is the one that's just for G-spot simulation. It's amazing. It might take you some time. So I had a friend in college. She never had an orgasm. She went away for 30 days. She was like an internship. And she said, I'm going to try every night for 30 days to make myself have an orgasm. And she literally tried and tried. And it wasn't until like the third week that she finally had one. So for some women, it takes time. So Savannah, wow. it's not you're not going to have the G-spot orgasm in a day. Right. But work on it. Do your Kegels. Enjoy play it. with it. Use lube. Get warmed up. Let me know how it goes. It's going to happen for, for sure. you. Okay. This was so helpful, MJ. You've got good Thank advice. You. This was really fun. So much fun. You are a blast, which I knew you'd be a blast. So we can't really give a lot about Shaz of Sunset this season, but except for that it's amazing. We all go what through is, a lot, is, a lot, a lot, a lot. You'll meet Gigi's husband and all of the rest of like the cast go through a whole bunch of stuff and... You know, like the, the uh, what do you call it? The stakes are high as the usual. The stakes are high. Okay, yeah. so tell me about what's going on with you, though. What are you excited about right now? About watching this season, you mean? Or like about, in my, for, like my lips right well, now? I want to hear about like, your lips. Well, yeah, I've been wanting to ask you because your lips look amazing. Like your lipstick, you. Like you put it, what is, I, I want. I um, developed a paraben-free, cruelty-free, made in the USA, beautifully formulated Liquid Pro Matte Lips is what the industry term is. Okay. And it can be purchased on Liquid Lips by MJ.com. And I started with three colors that the applicator of this lip wand is so precise that you don't need lip liner if you don't want to. But if you want, you know, lip liner, of course, it'll give it like a nice two-tone. One is called Natalie, which is a nude peach. Another one is called MJ, which is a cooler lavender and Vita, I named, which is my favorite, which is like a desert rose. And all of these are kiss proof, long lasting. You'll love the bottle. Don't you love this? I, like, it's little, beautiful. It's, it's like very shawzy. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And then, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then you can get three for 50. They'll last forever. And the last thing I was going to say is if somebody did want a creamy or high gloss, you just top it off with, you know, your super okay. gloss finish and it'll still stay to. on right it definitely like, does it's I long love it. wearing like it hasn't gone away mine's gone my lipstick's gone and you i know, haven't like kissed anybody some and I've days just they're talking eating my lips off but yours is just like sitting there it's yeah great. some days you might really have to remove it with makeup remover 
That's the best. So it really does last long for people who have a problem with or they don't, don't want to reapply or you just want to be one and go. I one never want to reapply. I feel like I'm always reapplying. I got no time. Life's this too is, short. This is the one. This okay. is the one. So they can all find this and they can find you on Instagram and Twitter. Oh, me? I'm at every, on Twitter, I'm Mercedes Everything. Javid. Instagram, Mercedes Javid. Um, Facebook, Mercedes Javid. Where else are we? Snapchat, Everywhere. same thing. It's all on my website as well. If yes. you guys are checking out the episode, you can check awesome. out that. This is so fun. Thank yes, you for it being was here. so fun. I mean, really, like, you're like my, yeah, you're like my co-pilot here. Awesome. Um, thank you for being here, and thank you to my amazing team. Thank you to everyone for following me on social media as well. It's Sex with Emily across the board, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram stories. You guys have been sending me so many great questions as well on Snapchat, and this is what I have to say. It's getting a little overwhelming. And I say that I answer you all and I'm really trying to, but if you have a detailed question, like someone cheated, but then you had an erection and you didn't know what happened and then someone left you and then you got like, I don't know what happened. You guys are telling me really intricate stories. You got to go to the website or you got to just text me 797979, ask Emily one word, then send the question that way because I can't answer you on Snapchat. It's just hard, but I love you all. I love my team. Thanks everyone for listening. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. 